Okay, so today we're going to be talking about tetanus. And what tetanus is, is it's a condition in which the muscles contract uncontrollably. So let's talk a little bit about this. And it's probably one of the more interesting diseases that are out there. If you ever got a Tdap shot, um, or if you're a little bit older like me, they used to call it the DTP shot. And the T stood for tetanus. So let's talk about what it is. First of all, tetanus is, tetanus, um, like we said, it's a condition in which the muscles are going to contract uncontrollably. It's caused by a bacteria that is called Clostridium tetany. Okay, so Clostridium tetany, this is a rod-shaped bacteria, so it's, called, it's a bacillus. And so here's my, here's my Clostridium right here. And it is also a gram-positive bacteria. So I'm gonna color this in. And if you recall, when we said gram-positive, what we mean is that it is colored, I mean, it stains when you go through gram staining. So there it is right there, okay? And then um, it's gram-positive and it's a bacillus. Okay, so what happens with tetanus? Well, most of the time, oh, I know what I wanna say. Tetanus is also anaerobic anaerobic. So that means it does not survive in oxygen. So when it's not inside of a person or it's not somewhere safe, it's away from oxygen, what it will do is it will form spores. So our spores will look, I don't know, something like this. And if you don't know what a spore is, a spore is basically like a protective covering that bacteria put over them. You can almost think of it as, as like a seed or the covering of a, a shell on a seed. Okay, in this case, I'm gonna have my bacteria inside there. So let me put my clostridium right there. And then what's gonna happen is when people have heard of tetanus before, what they've, what's happened is that um, they've always heard of rusty nails. Well, here's the thing about tetanus. It doesn't have to be a rusty nail to cause tetanus. It can be any cut. You can clean a kitchen knife and two seconds later, you go to put it away, you cut yourself. And if you haven't been vaccinated, you can actually get tetanus. So here's what happens is, let's say we have this cut now, all right? So um, here's somebody's arm or their hand, right? And I, I can't draw, but here's their hand. And what happens is they get a cut. Well, now tetanus will enter into that cut. Now, the thing about the inside of the cut is that the inside of most cuts are warm because it's your body temperature and they're anaerobic. So usually the inside of cuts, let me use a different marker. I want to use brown for this. So they're usually warm and anaerobic. Um, and aerobic, all right? So they don't have oxygen. So what's going to happen now is my clostridium is going to get inside of here. So here's my clostridium, right? And it's inside these spores. And I'm going to actually draw this a little bit bigger. Um, no, actually, yeah, it's okay. So I have my little spores there. And eventually what will happen is my clostridium will break out. So there's my clostridium, all right? And then it's going to start to reproduce like most bacteria do when they get into a certain environment. So it's going to start to reproduce and reproduce and reproduce and reproduce. And then what it's going to do is it's going to release a toxin. The Bacteria, the tetanus bacteria does not move from this area, but it te releases a toxin called te uh, tetanospasm. Okay, so it's going to release tetanospasm. This is the, what causes the problem. So here's my tetanospasm being released by my clostridium tetany. Okay, normally when your muscles work, as one muscle contracts, the next one relaxes, okay? And then when, the, when that one relaxes, the other one's contracted. They work opposite each other, right? What happens in tetanus is the muscles on both sides contract and they don't stop contracting. So how does that happen? In your body, I'm gonna just move this over here just a little bit. So in your body, in your nervous system, you have some cells, let's erase this. You have nerves, okay? So here's, 
here's a nerve right like this and then this nerve is going to come out and we're going to have this nerve come out and it's going to go to this muscle all right and then there's my muscle spindles okay now the way it works is usually an electrical impulse will come down here it's going to make that muscle contract in fact what we call this is an alpha motor motor means it controls muscle all right so it controls muscle all right it's an alpha motor motor neuron so there's my alpha motor neuron this is going to make muscles contract however we don't want our muscles contracting all the time so what you also have is a type of cell let's do this in green it's kind of the opposite so um, and then you're going to have coming off of this we have dendrites coming off of this okay so these are dendrites so what's going to happen is you are going to have basically cells neurons that see how, how excited these are and what these will do is they will inhibit these cells right here okay they're going to inhibit these cells so when they inhibit the cell the muscle relaxes all right so we're going to call this an inhibitory neuron All right, so there's my inhibitory neuron right there. I'm gonna move this back over this way just a little bit. There's my inhibitory neuron. Okay. And I can have them attached to here too. Okay, so, but we're just dealing with this one here. Now, inside of this, I'm gonna draw this now. And I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. The way it works is like this. By the way, and this is called the Renshaw cell. Okay, so this, this inhibitory neuron is called a Renshaw cell. So inside this portion of my Renshaw cell, this is it here. I'm gonna have something called a neurotransmitter. What the neurotransmitter will do is it will cross this little gap right here. All right, it's gonna cross that little gap that's right here. And then when it does, it kind of makes this relax again so muscles will relax. Make sense? So we, want, we don't want the muscles contracting all the time, so this says, hey, wait a minute, I'm, I'm finding out there's too much going on over here, so I'm gonna release my neurotransmitter to basically calm the cell down. So the way it normally works is my neurotransmitter comes out, goes through here, and inhibits that. Inside of this part here, I also have little proteins that are called snare proteins. All right? So these are gonna be called snare proteins, S-N-A-R-E. What's going to happen is normally the snare proteins will grab the neurotransmitter and then the neurotrans, or grab this vesicle. The neurotransmitter's inside something called a vesicle. It's going to grab it and it's gonna have it come over here and this vesicle will fuse with this membrane and release the neurotransmitter that's inside. So the neurotransmitter goes across there. Does that make sense? So now I got the neurotransmitter here, right? So this gets a signal from here saying, saying hey, there's, it gets a signal from here. This basically says there's too much going on over there. We need to calm this down so that muscle can relax. And so what happens is um, it sends this signal over to do it. And this is the way it normally works. You got the snare proteins that are gonna grab onto this. I'm just gonna put little hands on there or fingers. It grabs it, it pulls it this way, and the neurotransmitter comes out. In tetanus now, like we said, tetanus is going to release the tetanospasm. And so what the tetanospasm is going to do is it is going to come down and basically destroy these snare proteins. It will destroy these snare proteins. So now, what happens is, this neurotransmitter no longer 
is released. And if that's not released, there's nothing to slow this down. And so it just keeps contracting and contracting and contracting. Okay? And that's what's going to happen with tetanus. So our, our, our um, clostridium comes into the body, usually through a cut. doesn't have to be a dirty nail. doesn't have to be anything dirty. Just a cut. From the cut, uh, the, the clostridium gets inside. It's released from its spore. And then what the clostridium does is it goes and it destroys these snare proteins that are responsible for pulling that vesicle with the neurotransmitter towards the side of the cell so it can release the neurotransmitter so we don't have that going on. That will cause this to continue to contract uncontrollably. Now, the next thing is, the first place that this is usually going to affect is the jaw. It's not uncommon for tetanus to be called, it's not uncommon for tetanus to be called mock jaw. It's called lockjaw. Okay? Because that's the first place it goes to affect. So, what's going to happen is that it's going to, the jaw's going to lock, just like it sounds, right? The other thing that can happen is it can cause the back to arch. The muscles in the back start to contract, they start to arch, and it's called opistotinous. if I remember correctly. Actually, I think it's an O. Maybe it's an A. Okay? So, it's an O. So, opistotinous, okay? This is arching of the back. Okay? And, and it's, um, normally what happens is that the person goes backwards, obviously. Okay? So, we've got lockjaw, we've got opistotinous. The other thing that can happen is the contractions can become so bad that what will happen is you can actually tear muscle or break bone. Okay, so contractions can tear muscle or break the break bones. Now, normally, once symptoms start with this, what happens is you um, once symptoms start with this, what what happens is it's not untreatable. Okay, for the most part, it's untreatable. Usually what they do is they put people to sleep, basically, and they wait until they die. Eventually, these will affect the respiratory muscles. So it eventually affects the respiratory muscles, and when it does, the person dies. Okay, now I've seen some books that say it could also affect the cardiac muscle. I've seen some books that say this only affects um, skeletal muscles, so skeletal muscles in your respiratory system are what's between the ribs, okay? So um, that's pretty much it for tetanus. And oh, the one thing is the vaccine is a toxoid. So in other words, most vaccines will go in and kill the bacteria or build up an immunity to the bacteria. In this case, what you're doing is you're actually getting a toxoid. So you're actually getting something that goes um, and neutralizes the, uh, the tetanospasm. The vaccine is a toxoid <clears throat> that neutralizes the toxin. And like I said, the toxin is called tetanospasm. Okay? So that's about it for tetanus, and I hope you enjoyed this. Okay, and as you can see here, you can see the clenching of the teeth. You can see the uh, hands are clenched, the elbows are bent, and obviously there's a lot of discomfort there. This was one of uh, Napoleon's soldiers who got tetanus and as you can see this is opistotinus you can see the arch of the back notice the claw of the toes also all the muscles contracting the teeth are still contracted um, eyes are bulging so this is opistotinus this is another condition that can happen due to tetanus it's called uh, risis sardonicus and you can see there's clenching of the teeth 
Um, it's a weird looking smile, unfortunately, but this is due to the tetanus causing all the muscles in the lips and then the jaw to contract.